Your Majesty, you'll be pleased to know Russia is completely within our grasp now. Countries throughout Europe are proclaiming their allegiance to America and our revolution. Our plan is working, sir. But how should we deal with the remaining royals? They are not responding to our request to surrender. They won't respond until they think they're safe. Then, they'll try to bribe me. Well, they do know all you want to do is execute them. You have no need for their bribes when you can simply take it all once they hang. Of course they know this, but figure I'm too stubborn or vain and want to hear them beg me to spare their lives. But I have no natural need for their laments. I don't feed off of desperation as they do. Their masters have been doing that to humanity for countless centuries. I suppose they know of no other method that could drive a person, such as myself. They simply cannot fathom a greater satisfaction than holding people's lives in their maniacal hands. How is what you do any different, Osiris? What you are describing is yourself. Or are you too blind to see this blaring truth? What? What are you doing here? Be gone, Satan! <gasps> Excuse me, sir. Are you alright? Tell her the truth, Osiris. Tell her how insane you truly are. Lord Shelley, do you notice anyone else in the room with us? Why, no, sir. I mean, outside there are the royal guards and Gideon, but you and I are alone. You specifically asked to meet me in private on this warship. How far are we from London? Just a short ride on your Chinook, sir. Why? Oh, that's right. You got here with Gabriel. Never mind. Did you want to visit our base camp? But you specifically said you would only do that upon the Brits' surrender. And they haven't as of yet. Sir? See you, Silas. Her mind is already thinking you are insane. You are looking around like a madman, trying to find where in the captain's quarters I am hiding. But I am not hiding in this room. I am in your mind, Osiris. I am in your head always, because this is where you want me to be. Sir? Lord Shelley, how close are we to forcing the Brits to surrender? Well, sir, by my estimation, it could be another six months before we completely overtake them, using the conventional methods we've been employing, as you have commanded. Do you see a better way? Please, speak frankly. Your Majesty, in my opinion, this effort in Great Britain is taking too long. We should just drop a nuke on them and that will break them into pieces, as well as the other countries who want to drag this great war out. Forgive me for saying this, sir, but you are being too nice to your enemies by avoiding your greatest weapons to wipe them out, because you care about human casualties. And I do understand this, but your enemies also understand this and will use it to their advantage. They want to buy time and you are giving it to them freely. Well, well, listen to this, Osiris. She's even more evil than you are. No wonder you love her as much as you do. If she only knew all the fantasies you have about her, all you would do to her, but you would never, ever dare say any of this to her or anyone, would you, Silas? <laughs> Some absolute ruler you are. You can't even speak your mind. You think you have freedom and control to do as you please because you are the king. But... <laughs> You can't even say what you feel because you're afraid of what others will think. How pathetic. And you want to free these fools? They won't know what to do with real freedom. <laughs> Forgive me if I spoke too frankly, sir. Lord Shelley, you need not apologize. I value your opinion more than you possibly know. Thank you, sir. Um... I will consider your proposition, and we will discuss it at the next High Council meeting. I look forward to it. Will you be staying longer on this vessel, Your Majesty? I may. Perhaps we should talk more over a meal. 
I can't recall the last time we broke bread together. Well, I I am getting hungry. Oh, you're hungry, all right. What a smooth, ferocious lioness she is. <laughs> what is really on the menu? <laughs> Kingdom Radio Theater. Hey listener, Dutch here from Voice from the Underground, the podcast. My co-host and I want to invite you to check out our little corner of the podcast verse. At Voice from the Underground, we talk about all the crazy shit happening around us and try to make a little bit of sense out of the nonsense with little to no results. If the idea of hearing three semi-intelligent, outspoken nerds talk about politics, social issues, current events, sports, movies, pretty much anything that we decide to talk about because, well, it's our show, appeals to you, grab your shovel and come on down to the underground and then consult a qualified psychotherapist. Find us wherever you get your podcasts, just not where you buy your weed. Boys from the underground. In a remarkable turn of events, Chinese and American forces asserted a complete occupation of Russia and pushed their fronts into Kazakhstan, Belarus, Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Finland. With some countries already under American rule, such as Moldova, Georgia, Armenia, and Greece, the American expansion was rapidly surrounding the main countries in the European alliance, which still fought with all their might to stave off Asylus' takeover. In the covert move, the royal families of Denmark, Belgium, the Netherlands, Spain and Sweden all convened in Australia to hide from Asylus' Spartan forces, whose sole mission was to unleash the threshold on states with monarchies to kill all living royals. In a desperate plea, the royals sent a message to Asylus to spare their lives, and they would hand over much of their wealth. But Asylus gave no reply. Eyewitness News, where news comes first. Good evening, America. We have breaking news. Russia has been overtaken by American, Middle Eastern, and Chinese forces. In a stunning turning point in the Great War, which King Asylus refers to as the Great Revolution, the fragmented Russian government has surrendered. In an official statement released by the Kremlin just moments ago, the Russian president said, and I quote, Russia and all Russian government agencies are no longer in a conflict with America and wish to cooperate with King of Silas in his efforts in Europe and throughout the world. Our interests at this time as a government is to avoid further loss of innocent Russian lives. This war has been more costly in terms of lives than arsenal and monetary resources. Our efforts in King of Silas's revolution has reached its end, and we now join the new kingdom of America and King of Silas in this global effort to save humanity. Our government eagerly awaits the American representatives to officially turn over government resources to their transition teams, and the transfer of power can commence. End quote. Well, this news has sent shockwaves throughout the world as Russia, a one-time super powerhouse, is now under the control of America. As much attention is being given to this blockbuster news of the fall of Russia, there are other countries that have also surrendered to America, including Lithuania, Latvia, and Finland. In Finland, there are many celebrations in the streets as many citizens have openly expressed their support for King of Silas and have requested an official visit. But King of Silas has not said when he will officially visit any of the countries now in control of the new kingdom of America. Reaction from the office of King of Silas has been relatively modest with only a brief written statement being released, which I quote, 
The king is very happy about the news coming from Russia, Lithuania, Ukraine, Belarus, Finland, Kazakhstan, Latvia, and Estonia. In spite of these countries joining the cause to save humanity, we are still in the middle of the Great Revolution, and we will reserve celebrations for the day all nations unite in our cause. End quote. As one might imagine, we are being inundated with information in our newsroom and will continue to update the public of new developments in the Russian takeover. We have been informed from the office of Lord Jeremy Orb that Lord Joshua Jackson is on a plane as we speak, heading to Moscow to meet with the Russian transition team, but no further details are being released at this hour. Everyone, stay with us as we break for a commercial, and when we return, we'll get reactions from people across the kingdom about this sensational news coming out of Russia. Love, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. I don't know why I thought you would be gone longer. If I travel by plane, sure, but I was with Gabriel, and... Oh, yes! I forgot he can transport you in, like, a second. What does that feel like, anyway? Traveling in the blink of an eye, you mean? Well, yeah. Like, what goes through your mind when you travel that fast? Actually, it kind of feels like being on a roller coaster. I just close my eyes, and when I open them, I'm somewhere else. Wow. Anyway, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. My father. I've been trying to reach him for the last week and haven't heard back from him. And that's very unusual. I'm really starting to worry about him. Can you find out anything? You're not able to reach Luther? You call his office? Of course. After he didn't answer his private phone lines, I called his office, his wife, and even his ex-wife. But they haven't seen him either. His business partner said his last communication with the office was when he said he was traveling to Switzerland. Then you invaded Switzerland. Asylus, I'm scared he got caught in the crossfire. Sweetheart, if something happened to him in Switzerland, we would have heard about it. All Americans were accounted for, and Luther was not in Switzerland. Is it possible he told his business partner that, but was actually going somewhere else? I mean, Luther's marriage has been on the rocks lately. It's possible he eloped with some young actress or something. It's possible. He owns property all over the world. I'll give it a few more days, but it's unlike him to be out of touch so long, especially with the war and everything. He knows I worry about him in his travels. He would have called by now. I'll send someone to investigate it and find out where he is, my love. Thank you, dear. Also, I've been talking with Monica about the wedding. She's so excited. When she and Jacob get married, will you give her a title? Sure I will. But you know this family isn't like other royal families. We do things a lot differently. And I'm going to need you to help me figure this out. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I've got lots of ideas. I can't wait to hear them, my love.
still upon a throne And after all, the king deserves a taste The elephants and snakes and rats and vultures They dine at tables paid for by the sheep When they've tired of the crust They'll start to feast on some of us Dinner makes a peace. We are the children of disaster When we're only singing faster When will we are around That we never need a master Then somebody has to wander Somebody has to say Who makes a monkey king Anyway I get the sense that something is troubling you intensely. Is there something on your mind you wish to discuss? Something I can possibly help you with? Well, I've been struggling with some things and they're difficult to talk about. But Jeremy, I have zero doubts I can trust you about some of these troubles. You are my king. And if there is anything I can do to improve things for you, just say the word. I am your humble servant, here to assist you in whatever capacity. It's really complicated. I have some real problems, and I have no idea how to fix them. My brother, perhaps you can help me sort some things out. Okay. What is it, sir? Well, first, it won't be long before the queen figures out something is terribly wrong with her father. She's been trying to get a hold of him every day, and I think she senses something is awry. Mm. We figured eventually she would. Have you told her the war is likely making it difficult for him to communicate? Jeremy, she's not stupid. Her father is very resourceful. He would have communicated with her by now, and she knows it. You can't let on you know anything. Of course not. But I also don't want to seem too detached or indifferent. She knows I've been suspicious of him, which means she's probably suspicious of me. You were very clear in your directive about the details of his demise. I know. I told you specifically not to reveal anything to me. Sir, have you thought about having Capone break the news to her? Let me tell Quentin about what happened, and he can deliver the news to the both of you. This way you can be completely unaware and genuine when you find out what really happened to him. Capone? Okay. But how can we honestly do this? Well, like I said, I will brief Capone on the discovery of Luther's remains, and he'll come to you and the Queen and break the news to the both of you. I feel like such a bad person, Lord Orib. No, you're not a bad person. You're just someone caught in an impossible situation. Let Capone be the bad person in the eyes of your family. They will forever see him as the bearer of bad news. They can take out their anger and pain on him, as can you as well. You will have to unleash fire and fury, your majesty. Look, Luther was close to you, and I know you loved him. In the end, he doesn't have to be remembered as a traitor or scumbag, even though he really was. He can be laid to rest with honor and dignity, which is more than he would have afforded you. But that aside, you need not worry any more about this. Just let me handle it and prepare yourself and be available for your wife as she grieves. This will probably halt the wedding plans and dampen our victories in Russia and Europe. Rebecca won't want to celebrate anything for a long time. Her father meant the world to her. Damn it, Luther. You egotistical, greedy bastard. I know, sir. I know. But at least he's no longer a threat to our cause. Was there something else you wanted to talk about? Lord Shelley. Lord Shelley? I don't understand. Did something happen with her I'm unaware of? 
I kissed her. You what? Why? Uh, I don't understand. She apparently has feelings for me in much the same way I do for her. I don't know what to say. I'm completely shocked. Look, I'd advise you not to pursue this. This is the devil, sir. No, 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 no. He's making you give in to temptations. Please, for God's sake, sir. This can't happen. Think of your wife, the queen. Come on, Jeremy, don't act so surprised. But honestly, I only kissed her. And I felt so terrible afterward. I apologized a hundred times. But she didn't resist either. It felt like it could have gone a lot further. I just got caught in the moment. I I don't know what got into me. Oh, I know what got into you, sir. And this would spell disaster. I know you are the king and you can do anything you want. But this would be devastating. Not just for your marriage, sir, but for your soul. My marriage? (laughs) Rebecca would never find out. With all due respect, women always find out, sir. Husbands always think they can get away with such things. But wives always figure it out. They just do. It's like they have some keen sense. Don't ask me how, but rest assured, the queen will sense your infidelity. I know, Lord Oreb. That's why I'm telling you this. I wholeheartedly trust you, my friend. And I'm never going to go there with Lord Shelley. I won't. I can't. I just had a weak moment, that's all. Please, for the love of God, sir, let that be your only weak moment. Troubled by his fervent desire for Lord Shelley, King Asalas, against his better judgment, sought counsel from Rabbi Rashi rather than Dr. Ezekiel. Although the rabbi was an honorable man and one of the most respected theologians in the world, his instincts told him speaking about matters of such a personal nature would be a terrible mistake. But he felt his soul was slipping into an abyss and his mind into madness. His faith in Dr. Ezekiel was shaken because he was losing some of his inner control. Asilas weighed his explosive options in his mind, but soon found bills in the middle of his inner conversations. Rabbi Rashi listened attentively to Asilas' troubles and remained quiet for much of his visit. At some point, Asilas realized he was doing most of the talking and carefully watched the look in the rabbi's eyes to read his reactions. There was a long pause, and then the rabbi spoke. He told the silence. By virtue of having a wife, a man may accomplish all of the mitzvot or commandments in this world and in the next. When a man marries, you see, all his sins are forgiven, and he saves himself from all sin, because man lives by virtue of taking a wife and, by design, naturally, procreates and has a family by God's will. A man teaches them about God and service to his fellow man, and this is how he can fulfill all of the commandments. For if he loves his wife as himself, he will fulfill the commandments. Asylus, the commandments are very clear. Should you ever have any doubt about the actions you take or the desires to fathom, revisit the commandments and you will find clarity. Do you understand this? Rabbi, I... I, um... Lay down the sword of your desires, Asylas. Let virtue be your sword. Bring your wife closer and you will accomplish all the mitzvot. Do you understand this?
You've been listening to The Rise of King of Silas, Episode 19, Bittersweet Surrender, starring J.V. Torres as King of Silas and Beals, Shane Maester as Lord Anna Patricia Shelley, Stephen Fisher as Lord Jeremy Oreb, Meg McDonald as Queen Rebecca, Don Rosinski as Newsreader, Peter Gollop as Rabbi Rashi, and narrated by Sergei Bereshnikov. This episode features the songs The Monkey King by Tandem Unicycle and Roll On by The Blam Blams. Download the music of Tandem Unicycle and The Blam Blams on Bandcamp and iTunes today. Other music contributions by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, Sergey Cheremisinov, D. Yankee, Dexter Britton, Wolandroid, Freesound.org, and Audio Jungle. For more information about the cast, the music, or this production, please visit us at our website at www.theriseofkingasilas.com. And now, a word from our podcast friends. Hello to you all. My name is Michael Marshall. I'm from Australia, and I'm a voice actor. I want to thank the excellent producer of this podcast for giving me a little bit of time to talk to each and every one of you. What I have done today is to come on to this podcast and shamelessly promote my services. If you have a podcast or anything in between where you're looking for an actor who can do a range of different voices, well, you have found one in me. Now, I don't want you to take my word for it. For those on Facebook, go to the search bar, type in Michael Marshall Voice Artist, take a look at my page, have a listen to the demos, a good listen, and if you like what I'm doing, please give my page a like and some shares if you want. And if you want to use me, or just have a question for me about, well, anything really, send me a message. It's uh, near the top of the page. I've got a nice little send message button. And ask away. Now, don't worry, I am not just confined to Facebook. Now, for those of you who are on YouTube, if you type in uh, Michael Marshall voice actor, yes, I'm pretty sure that's what I've called myself on there, you will find my YouTube channel. It's not a massive channel, but it's got all the demos and things that are also on my Facebook page for those that don't want to get into the whole Facebook thing. And you can contact me through there. I believe my email is displayed and there should be a send message button on YouTube if they haven't taken it away. And if you're on LinkedIn, you can also find me under Michael Marshall Voice Actor. So please have a look, have a listen, have a like, have a share. And if you ever want to know more about me, drop me a line on any of the aforementioned platforms, including Twitter as well, I should put that in, at MMarshallVOA. That's capital M, capital M, A-R-S-H-A-L-L, capital V, capital O, capital A. And you can talk to the voice actor who is totally blind. That's right, blind as a bat, absolutely no sight. Dear, dear, dear me, time is getting on. And I'm sure there are many of you wringing your hands, screaming, crying, tearing out your hair, smashing your head against the walls, wondering, oh God, when's my podcast coming back on? This guy just never stops talking. (laughs) Don't worry. Calm yourself. You'll be back with your podcast right, right about now. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2019. And stay tuned for episode 20. (laughs) 